Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Hockey Journey Podcast, episode number 106, The Pitlick Family Hockey Journey, part one, presented to you by OnlineHockeyTraining.com. I'm your host, Coach Lance Pitlick. If you're new here, please make sure you subscribe so you won't miss out on any future episodes. Before we dip our toes into some uncharted waters and begin this conversation, if you want to learn more about me, my hockey experiences, what I know, and most importantly, how I've been helping hockey players get really good with a stick and puck, just head on over to OnlineHockeyTraining.com, that's OnlineHockeyTraining.com, and gain instant access to my 10-part video series where I'll show you everything. Consider it my gift to you. Lastly, if you live in Minnesota or are visiting the state of hockey sometime soon and you want to schedule an in-person off-ice stick skills lesson, I'd love to have the opportunity to show you my little world. Go to SweetHockeyCoach.com, that's SweetHockeyCoach.com, and watch the video on the homepage for instructions. Thanks, and I look forward to working with you sometime soon. Hey everyone, we got something uh, new for you today, as my son Rem will first. My son Rem has uh, recently been... Uh, engaged to his longtime girlfriend, uh, Kayla. So we're excited about that new family member coming to our team. But uh, what they did recently was start the process, and they, they actually finished most of it, of uh, going through his room and getting everything the heck out of our house. <laughs> so we appreciate that. But uh, that, that process kind of uh, gave both of them uh the i guess they they had a moment where they're like holy cow this is like my whole life and his uh, soon-to-be wife was like this is your whole life and they were um kind of overtaken by gratitude uh rem did because he's like holy cow mom and dad you know you just start reflecting on you know all those years and all the different things that have happened in that and you talk to your younger brother rept and uh he said, let's do a podcast uh, where, you know, we can talk a little bit about uh, our journey together as a family, but more so you just wanted to say thanks. And we have no idea where this is going to go. Uh, we're just going to start and, uh, you know, whatever comes to mind. But the, the, the purpose of it is much, you know, like all the episodes that I do here in the Hockey Journey podcast is to, to help people. Uh, Rem and Rhett are currently on their hockey journey as a player. And, uh, you know, my wife is here, Lisa. She was a competitive gymnast. Uh, I had my, my time as a hockey player in the NHL. So we had, we've had a lot of experiences, and we're not experts in, on anything. We're not saying that we are, but we just hope that maybe, you know, sharing uh, some of our stories might help someone out there. Um, and... Uh, so we're just going to give it a go. So Remmer, I'm going to, well, first we got, let's just talk about who all is here. We got everyone that's in the room. We got uh, my wife, Lisa. We got the Remmer, soon to be wife, Kayla. Then we got Rhett's here and uh, his girlfriend, Megan, is sitting in the weeds. She's not saying anything. She's a big talker, so it's hard to keep her quiet, but we'll see what happens here as we go. But uh, uh, happy for everyone to be here and we're excited to see where this takes us and uh, it might be one episode, it might be more, but we're going to start with this one today. Remmer, I'm going to turn it over to you, my son. <laughs> that was a pretty good intro, Dad. I kind of, we were all, we were looking at each other like, where are you going <laughs> with this? <laughs> pretty good. We had a good conversation before and you were just, I guess you listened. That was kind of what sparked it. Um, Kayla and I cleaning out my room. Um, and there was just, there, like, like you said, there were so many different memories that came through and it, um, there was a lot of gratitude and I was just so thankful. Um, and really what I was thankful for is like the intentionality of you and mom um, as we were growing up, like so many, like just different things came up about, you know, time on the pond, you know, I come home every summer and it's, it's interesting how after a season and a year away from home, you see your house that you've been in your whole life, but it's like different now all of a sudden and you see it kind of different as you are. And just seeing the pond, then reflecting back on, you know, the time at the cabin where it's so important to you and mom that we would, you know, take a break from hockey and have fun and be outside. 
um, and seeing the pond here at home and all those, you know, just remembering you like flooding it and, and doing things. And, you know, so I was just really grateful for like, you guys were very thoughtful in helping us like do whatever we wanted. And, and that's also what I appreciate so much that I wouldn't say that you guys like put us before at the same time you did put us before you and you always made sure we were taken care of. And, um, yeah, it was just really cool to kind of experience that and feel all the feelings that came with the memories. And I think, um, what else is really important that I think about and I'm super grateful for is like the thought processes and kind of like the simple statements that you told Rhett and I as kids with just, uh, I just kind of think about how you and mom, how I was raised. You guys kind of always made me feel like, you know, you could do anything as long as you worked hard and, you know, work smart by, you know, you, you always said this statement of you become the five people you spend the most time with. And then any sort of like anything that you want to achieve in the world um, or anyone that's, you know, if you have a problem, anyone um, that's had a problem, like chances are that person that has achieved something or gotten through an issue, you can find that person or, you know, find the book that was written about it. So I just kind of like those statements and those memories and those thoughts that you and mom would always kind of describe to us in your own language really just came through. And I think that's what I was experiencing um, when I was cleaning out my room and just like, it kind of all came through and our whole life has, has kind of been just like this whole thing of hockey, health mindset, and just kind of like sharing. So it was really cool. Well, thank you for that. And it was intentional. Um, mm -hmm. You know, both your mom and I, we once, you kind of got the hockey bug and it was, it was different for you because we were, I was still playing. We were down in Florida and I tried to introduce you to hockey, you know, not hockey, just skating when we were down there, but none of your buddies <laughs> skated. So you had no interest. So your first time was after I retired and you're like five years old. But uh, once you showed a passion for the sport, you know, that being, you know, they having the experiences that both your mom and I did as athletes. I mean, that's a competitive advantage doesn't matter what sport it is. The process of uh, getting better intentionally is the same. Uh, and uh, that's what we tried to do in the house that we, we bought. It was intentional because it had a pond. Uh, we built uh, an area under the garage so you guys could have a, a place to, uh, you know, work on your skills in, in addition to your team practices and games. So, um, and you know, I think I'll, I'll just start it that early on, you know, we, we divided our, our, you know, our commitment to you guys into what is mom responsible for, what is, you know, I'm responsible for. So I was basically in charge of the coaching and, you know, skill stuff and mom was in charge of everything else. <laughs> 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 but she was in charge of the schooling and the, the health stuff. So, you know, it was intentional and we didn't have any um, thought early on that you guys would accomplish what you, you've done so far. But uh, we, we, we just saw that you had gravitated to it. Uh, you had strong feelings and passions and you wanted to, you know, you wanted more, you wanted to learn. And we just try to try to cultivate, you know, that passion like any parent would do once they see their kid. I mean, if you guys are into piano, man, you would have been working with piano people. Um, I tried. It didn't yeah, last long. <laughs> <laughs> so well, mom you. supported me in that. I used to take piano lessons at the Kowalski's forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So anyways, but yeah, it was intentional. And. You know, we, we've, we've definitely had a family journey in this sport with a lot of uh, challenges, a lot of great moments. Um, it, that's just par, par for the course. But, you know, what, what's some of your early memories, you know, being here, Remmer? You know, when we got the house and, you know, got it all set up here. Yeah, it, it's actually really funny. We're on, we're on the same wave right now, Dad, because I was thinking about where I wanted to go with this. And you brought up a, you, you started talking about um, mom's, mom's responsibilities and your responsibilities. And I think that the question slash thing that I'm like, thinking about the earliest memories is that, you know, I'm thinking about how mom and I kind of gravitated towards each other more, not in the sense of any other than that. It just how I just, I'm thinking about, I'm actually going to seventh grade right now when like you stopped coaching um, my team on the blades 
And I feel like you, well, then you started coaching Rhett more. And I'm just thinking about how Rhett was spending more time with you as you started coaching him. And then I was always with mom. So I though it's not really like the early on memories, but I kind of wanted to ask mom a question because I think about so much of like my time with mom was like around like health stuff. Like you said, she was kind of responsible for the health, the cooking, um, the schooling, all that kind of stuff. And um, I feel like with Rhett, you and when you and Rhett together, it was, it was so much about mindset. But just to go back to mom, you know, I'm we're in mom's office right now. And for the first time in my life, I walked in and I looked at all of her books. And it's like all these books on like energy, <laughs> energy and magnets and eating right for your body type. And I always knew she was interested in that. But it's just kind of funny how yeah, she always was. I, I always used to have all those like bad coughs and stuff when I was younger. And I feel like I was always in the doctor's office and we mom would take me and we'd, we'd go, we'd go there and they would say, take nine inhalers and these pills. And then mom would be like, all right, like we'll grab those, but let's go see like this weird doctor in St. Paul who would describe all these like weird, like herbal pills and stuff. And I just wanted to ask you, mom, like where, like all these, I didn't even notice these books, like where, where did these interests like to you like where did these come from like why were you so interested in that and why did you always feel you wanted to like show me that well i think being an athlete myself especially gymnastics where everything is about body awareness being you know obviously a gymnast we have to be very strong and whatever we put side in our note, body side note you weren't just a competitive gymnast you were a world-class gymnast <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, so it's a lot of responsibility to whatever put you put in your body. Obviously, it's going to affect mm -hmm. how you're able to perform. And But who taught you? Was that like Nana or is that like, well, Papa was always big into the farming and stuff. But like, was it from your coaches or like, where did you start to think like, oh, what I put in my body is like good for me? I don't know if I just was interested in general because you could feel the difference. I did live when I left home at 14. I did live with a family who... The mother was primarily in vegan Texas. In, in Texas. Texas. Yep. She was more vegan. However, we did eat chicken. You know, the rest of the rest of us did have more chicken and different mm. items, but everything was organic right away. And she was very particular on the foods we ate. And in gymnastics, we do have to keep our weight at a certain sweet spot, right? Yeah. <laughs> to be able to do those perform. moves. Right. And so I think um, her daughter had a tendency to be a little bit uh, heavier if I should say I love Kim but I think her mom was really worried about that so we really were focused I mean one we always seem to feel that as soon as you felt like you were a little heavy all of a sudden it kind of came <laughs> that you would like your touch wasn't as good like your feel right right so it was um something that was already ingrained right away that food was an important Thing to think about what was being put in our body um the calories what type of foods would make us perform better but in general and then i went into college and designed my own degree so i was already studying those kind of aspects um, and your degree was health and wellness yeah. so and I, let me interject here too that you know say this that you know the sacrifices that moms make you know that they put everyone in front of their own interests and stuff. So at least your mom was, uh, she was, she had dreams of being a doctor. She was pre-med and uh, got accepted to the University of Minnesota. Um, did her internship when I was playing in Hershey, Pennsylvania. That was required before you started. And, uh, you know, I ended up making it to the NHL and, you know, that was it. You know, she their dream that of that was over. We started having kids, so I don't think it was over. It was just different. It was well, different. just it, changed. You just it. Well, I mean, the dream of being a doctor yeah. was over. She committed to being a family, you know, being a mom, and um, yeah. and she shifted. So, you know, I, I think I I benefited from that as well, Ram. You know, because uh, well, we all did. her knowledge in the health health world. So yeah. I just wanted to recognize that because oh, yeah, for you know, sure. it was a big sacrifice and I appreciate you doing that, honey. Yeah. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it was a We got to keep it PG. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, remember back in the day, I mean, I was a personal trainer, aftercare specialist. I mean, before people really went into personal training back in the day, I mean, it was an interest that I had already. I mean, 
So it was kind of natural it, to go hand in hand, that food, exercise. Well, it, pe- it was just like what you had. It just kind of like came naturally. You were at the family all of a sudden they're doing those things. So it wasn't like you were going to look for it. It just like kind of came to you almost. Perfect. Yes. And then I had my mom, obviously, who was very motivated to find ways to help me get over injuries. Yeah. So she was very creative. I did. I was injury prone in a sense so we would be running all over the cities to a podiatrist that would put my foot in place why do you think you're in why you say it like that why do you think you're injury prone you know i think i was talking to kayla a little bit i had a tendency of uh now that i see it in ret too a little bit i had a tendency to push the envelope a lot i think i was a daredevil and yeah. would kind of like lee like like you're talking about lee like our, <laughs> our, un- our uncle lee was in was a navy seal and he definitely has a lot of energy go getter, so she's talking about. Yes. So I mean that kind of when you're pushing the envelope, you have a tendency to also push oh, it that you might have an it. injury. Yes. It. Mm-hmm. So back in the day that back then chiropractors weren't really known the same way as that they're known now for helping athletes mm-hmm. kind of get to their peak performance. So she always was helping to try to find different ways to to help us. Yeah. You know, Which is amazing. Which is amazing, hon, because there wasn't any YouTube back then. I mean, we were influenced by the paper and four channels on the TV, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. on what healthy living was. So to, to be going outside the box and looking for chiropractors and, you know, uh, cleaner uh, foods to eat and stuff like that, that was cutting edge back then. I think it was, but I, it must have uh, helped. So that's why we would have, were motivated to kind of find that that path was path in a sense yeah interesting huh dad i i wanted to ask because mom (laughs) i i don't know what we've been talking about our whole lives but i don't know why i didn't know more of mom's degree and what she did because we were talking to her friend mara the other day and she said that the only nine to five job that mom had was you know literally personal training people workouts and fitness programs i'm like how did i not know this but um so anyways I just want to get a little bit more clarification. What did you mention on your, your episodes of your hockey journey? What is your degree in? My degree is in human relationships. So is that like, is that like psychology or is that, what, what does that kind of entail? It's a counseling degree and it's a good story. So let's, let's quickly talk about that. So I wasn't a very good student. I, I shouldn't say, I mean, I worked hard, but a lot of subjects were difficult for me, especially math. So I was tough. Uh, I, I had to get into the uh, University of Minnesota um, and I had to take the SAT or ACT twice to get in, but I never was a, a, a really good student. Like I said, I, I had to work hard. And the, the thing that your mom, I totally lost where I was going with this guys. I'm sorry. Well, no, you were, <laughs> well, it was just, it was just the story of you being uh, how you got your degree. Oh, human relationships. That's right. Uh, so any when you go into school, I mean, you, you, you had to go through the same thing. You meet with your academic counselor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I, I filled out the forms to try to find out what I might be interested in. And it, it showed this uh, a counseling degree would probably be the 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 degree that I, I could stay eligible for the, you know, the whole deal. Uh, um, yeah. So I asked I asked the guy. He says, and I think you're going to do really well, he says, he says, because once you get through the first couple of years, uh, it's a heavily female dominated field. So when you're in a class, you're going to be one of the only males in there and they're going to ask you for the male perspective. So you're going to have to study. So I think you're going to do just fine in this. And so that's what I did. And I never used it, you know, per se for making, um, you know, getting a job. But as I look at it now, Remmer, uh, it's, it's been an integral part of, uh, you know, how I coached, you know, a lot of the, the things that I learned in that, uh, my view on life. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's, yeah, a human relationship. So it's, you know, it's all interconnected with, uh, you know, connections with people yeah. um, and how we communicate. I mean, that's very important. Yeah. I think, and the only reason why I was asking about your degree, not, I mean, degrees are cool, whatever. I don't have one, but I, I get the importance. Um, and I asked mom just because, like, I think sometimes in some ways, like, people's degrees, like, represent kind of what they're interested in. Um, you know, everyone has different 
levels of like attention span or interest in school. But, you know, when you're there for four years in college, you know, you might as well try to find something that you're interested in. So I, I think it makes sense that mom was health and wellness is what she was interested in. And you, it, yeah, you talk about the interconnectedness. Like, I feel like my whole life, all I ever heard from you is like, it's between your ears. And you always would like giving, be giving me books and like never forcefully, but just like, hey, like, I think you should read this book. It's really important for your mindset. And uh, so what I'm getting at is this like the interactions and different things. Like, I feel like I spend so much time with mom and I'm like, if anyone knows me really well, I think they would say like, I, I love hockey and I'm really into health. And it makes sense because I was always with mom and we were always doing like health related stuff. And not that I wasn't around you, because um, I definitely am very interested in mindsets and all those things, too. Um, but just kind of making a simplified story. Um, when I think about if anyone knows Rhett really well, I think anyone would say, like, Rhett loves hockey. And he's kind of like this really interesting, creative, quietly, mentally strong kid. And, uh, and it, it, that makes sense, because he was always around you and you had your interests and in, um, based on your human relationships and your counseling stuff that you went through. And I just kind of wanted to like ask you, Rhett, like you spent so much time with dad. And like, I feel like I learned so much from mom with like the health and wellness stuff. And I feel like you like learned a lot from dad with like creativity and like mindset. I was just curious, like what you're grateful for from dad, like all those times that you spent together, like what dad like really taught you or just kind of like. Yeah, I'm definitely infinite grateful for dad and things that he has taught me is being very optimistic and something about just going with the flow and trusting the, the process. Um, he definitely has a calm energy, which I feel I kind of have that as well from him. So he taught me to just like really trust in the nature's process of how the events of your life go and, you know, trusting and believing in yourself. And I think my dad had showed me, the, a great strength with with the poise of him as an individual individual person himself and yeah so a few things he taught me is just calmness and trusting the process for sure yeah i think this summer like you know Rhett and i um just for you know because we're talking to an audience right now but uh Rhett and i like we train a lot together like we skate every day together we work out every day together and like it's it's been fun um this summer we skate with a guy um, Scott Broca, I'm sure a lot of people in Minnesota know who Scott is, but uh, I think what Scott brings is a lot of fun, like games in his practices. So like Rhett and I, and we've talked to Scotty, like we always try to be on the same team and it's been, <laughs> been like interesting this summer, like Rhett and I have kind of like, you know, we've enjoyed it a lot, but we've also kind of like went at it with each other. Cause like, it's, it's just so crazy. Like we we're both hockey players and we've been doing it our, but we see it so different. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's been a, it's been really cool how like sometimes like during practices, like with Rhett, like I'll get, you know, a little bit uh, passionate and like, we'll raise my voice and like Rhett always likes to like calm the energy. And um, so it's just interesting to kind of like think about these stories and how we, we became the way that we are. And I, I just feel like I'm a lot more like mom and dad's a lot or Rhett's a lot more like you dad. So it's just, it's kind of interesting to kind of connect on all these stories and see where it comes from. And, uh, uh, I, I, I'll just share one that popped into my head right here is that, you know, uh, what I do for my main job is uh, I, I teach stick skills. People come over here and I show them how to get better with the stick. And, and in the summers, I would always do a lesson with you and your, you know, either Casey, one of your buddies or the three uh, or Rhett, you and Charlie. And I absolutely hated doing lessons with you guys because you get so angry, you know, and down there. And that's, you know, you wouldn't be like that with the, with any other coach, but with dad. And it's funny because you, you talked about mom um, helping you guys out um, in the mornings working out. And she said to me just the other day, she goes, are the boys fighting with you when you're, you know, training them? I said, they did. But I said, I just had a lesson with you guys. Um, the first one a few weeks ago, we haven't had one in a couple of years because of COVID and everything. You guys are training elsewhere. And it was the most enjoyable lesson I had with you guys because there was no fighting or anything. So when your mom said that to me, I was like, what? I thought they got over that. <laughs> well, we just know that you won't do lessons if we, if we, if we show our emotions. So <laughs> I'd walk out of lessons for the people. I'd walk out of lessons with the people that are here. I mean, I remember you getting so mad. 
you threw your stick and we had one of the, the tarps hanging from the wall and your stick embedded it impaled it and went all the way through it. And then you, <laughs> you broke, uh, you slammed your stick on the ground and you broke one of my tiles and it was right <laughs> in the middle of the room. It took me two hours to replace it. And I put it up on the wall. I made you sign it. And I said, you look at that every time you come down here. So don't do that again. Hey, well, you know what? I know I'm, I'm working on that stuff. And I just, I just cared. Like I wanted it to go in every time. So <laughs> when I missed, I didn't like it. Um, oh, it, yeah. We, I guess we all have our different ways of going about things. But uh, yeah. One thing that I wanted to ask, like you, I feel like there's a family story with like Rhett, how when you did the, you know, we've said it so many times, like, when you uh, would always flood the pond for us in our backyard, Dad, um, you know, you, you get it ready for us. And it must have been the day that I wasn't home and you got the pond ready and you brought Red down there and you guys were skating. And all of a oh, sudden, no, 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 I don't. I think it's the one that you said. He came home. He was in kindergarten, I think. Came home from school, got off the bus. I spent the whole day. I mean, it was a, a, a Rockwell painting is what it looked like when you drove by it. I said, you see the pond? He says, oh, it looks awesome, Dad. I said, you want to go out there? He says, ah, I'm going to go out and play some video games or something. I'm like, all right. And my office overlooks the pond, and all of a sudden I see the little crapper on the ice. I'm like, mother pucker. So I went down there, got my skates on, and I went on the ice. I wasn't down there 30 seconds. He went back in the house. So from that moment on, I knew that he was walking to the beat of his own drum. And yeah. <laughs> so if you wanted to hang with me, he he'd have to ask me. I was I was done after that. Do you remember that story, Red? Um, I remember tying my skates for the first time going down to the pond, but not yeah. exactly that story. You don't remember that story, huh? Yeah, that was. I don't know. Like... You remember the story, Rem? When you got off the bus, you're so excited to come home, and you're running down the sidewalk, and you didn't know that they just poured. Yeah, I know they the did the cement thing. Whatever. I think the people are going to get bored with the stories. I actually want to <laughs> ask you. I actually want to ask a few questions that. I think going back to how I opened it up, just like the gratitude of what you guys showed me and different things. Like, I think so much of like what you guys told me about life was that you're going to have some amazing moments and you're going to have some challenging moments. And it, it makes like the, the really great ones that much sweeter. And I guess I'll just like start with um, mom and just... <laughs> She's shaking her head. I just, it doesn't need to be like crazy dark or anything, but I was just curious if like, you know, I want to ask you about like, you know, a challenging moment that you felt like changed you for the better and like a moment in your life that like was a really great moment that kind of also changed you for the better. If you can think about that or if you're not ready, you can ask Rhett, are you ready or should I, should I? No, I don't know if I really have the, I, that's kind of, I'm not sure if I even can get to that point right away. I, I spoke to you guys earlier that I think some of the things that I went through kind of just benefited you guys in general. When we were talking about health and wellness I had was injury prone, right? Mm -hmm. In a sense. And those injuries were not only physically devastating to my career, but they mentally and emotionally were challenging. Mm -hmm. And I think in general, that's probably the motivation that came with, making sure that you guys were taken care of in a way that would help you achieve your goals. And that's kind of that motivation to make sure that you were being taken care of. Were you, you know, getting the right food? Were you sleeping properly? Um, did you have the time away from the sport? Cause I think I, one of the challenges I had being injured is I'd never had that time off in gymnastics. It's kind of like 365. Mm -hmm. You you practice 365 days a week or a year, yeah. you know, and you have no time off. And I learned, I wish I would have learned the lesson or I had people who would have realized that you do need time off as an athlete mm -hmm. to, to be better. Mm -hmm. And those kind of things, I learned a lot of tough lessons that way that I really didn't want you guys to make those same mistakes. So mm -hmm. making those mistakes myself kind of prevented, I hopefully some of the things that you guys maybe wouldn't have had to go through. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, I feel like you've always been like a mentor for me that way. Just like I haven't always listened, but on my own time, just, you know, listening to you. And I respect you because of how much success you had as a gymnast representing the U.S. internationally so many times. Like, I think it's one thing to say things, but and, and that's very important as well. Like, you can always listen to everyone. But when someone who's been there, done that at a high level says something like it's, you know, that that sticks a little bit more for me. So I always have done my best to listen to you, but also like want to do things my own way. But it kind of added with dad, with him, he does have a 
with his background and that mental mindset. I mean, we always understood how important it was to have something between the two, your two ears <laughs> that you were on the same page and that you were really focused and mentally strong. I really didn't think about it until I started seeing some videos online. You know, mm -hmm. people would look me up and find some videos of an international mm -hmm. competition. And there was a, a, a skill, round off, double back on the beam that what I dismounted. And I remember thinking how terrified I was of that, that trick. Mm -hmm. And that I never practiced that in the gym. I only did it in competition. Mm -hmm. And I just thought to myself, how mentally strong you can be as an athlete that I didn't practice it, but I was able to perform it. Mm -hmm. And that how important that is to be mentally strong, but whatever you believe in or dream of or what you want, it can happen in that sense. Yeah. And you, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That, I mean, you can do whatever you want if you think about it. And that's why maybe I also started studying about all those effects of when you're injured a lot of times they'll have those studies saying that athletes that would just imagine them playing when they were injured and they couldn't compete or you know practice mm -hmm. they would actually have a placebo you know kind of a mm -hmm. testing that one group would visualize them training and another group wouldn't and after they got back they could re they saw the studies that showed that the ones that visualized it really just jumped back into competition right away and they saw improvements actually with just visualization and just having a mind, a strong mindset. Yeah. Interesting. Cause that kind of brings me to like, I guess I'll just jump in and kind of say something based on the questions that I kind of asked and we just started talking. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, something that really sticks out is like a, you know, a challenging, but good moment was uh, in college. I kind of had these weird coughs and different things. Like I kind of, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I got pretty sick in college my sophomore year and I was really grateful because my best my best friend Casey Dornbach, um, he he recommended um, it's kind of like some some health podcasts and different things. And all of a sudden, he's like, "We should read Tom Brady's TB12 Method book." And it just kind of like um, you know through that tough time of being sick, I, I feel like I just I started to think about you a lot. Just not necessarily that you were sick, but just like injuries or different things like that. Um, it, I just something was connected with being an athlete and doing things in a way that was, you know, about your health. And Tom actually talks about in his book, like mindset stuff. So it's just kind of interesting to kind of think about, you know, your, your health stuff and then dad's mindset stuff. And I read this book. So yeah, that, that really was a, an interesting moment for me. Um, dad. I, yeah. I, you know, just saying that it's, you know, you, you, you think about playing a sport it's all the physical activity that you do and it's the, the competition of it. But then there's, there's a lot of things that just kind of pop up and uh, they can't be solved. I got, mm -hmm. I got uh, a player that I'm training right now that has had a, uh, a similar thing that I had. I had. I had a lot of midline problems, groins, hip flexors, hamstrings and stuff. And uh, she's been, you know, struggling to find um someone to that can say all right definitely this is what it is and she can't and we've had i mean your mom and i lisa and i we've had what honey 19 surgeries since we met each other in 1989 <laughs> between the two of us we've we've bought a few orthopedics a house or at least a cottage something but uh you know it's 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 all these experiences that we went through you're talking about your cough, uh, you know, you, you learn how to um, kind of connect with different people, but it's hard sometimes. And that's, I, I think, one of the reasons that you wanted to do this is that there was, there has been a lot of question marks, you know, throughout all of you, all of our lives, uh, you and Rhett, that you, you need a, you need an army of people to kind of help navigate. And you said it earlier that, the odds of someone out there that is experiencing what you're going through is pretty strong. You just got to do the due diligence to try to find it. And right now it's never easier to be able to find uh, and consume information uh, if you're just willing to put the work in and look. Yeah, 100%. And just because you, you mentioned the hips and midlines, like <laughs> there was always that story in the family that, you know, you had told me when you're battling your groin injuries and you're sitting out for so long, you had to get shots above, 
uh, your pubic bone. And I just remember, you know, mom telling the story of how you'd be sweat, you were sweating because you would go in there with him, right? Yes. And he would just be like sweating and you'd be like freaking out and stuff and just like what you had to go through. And I think it's just so interesting. Like, you know, that's why I really, you know, our, my agent, Neil Sheehy, um, I actually went through kind of something similar as you did. Like I had really bad hip flexor problems. You know, you'd always wrap my hip flexor up and I, I had to take like a whole summer off of training before my junior year at Shattuck. I remember you just trying to get over the boards. It I couldn't even. And then, difficult. you know, Neil, you know, I'm sure a lot of Minnesota people know Neil, but Neil started, he's a neuromuscular therapist and he would start <laughs> massaging my head. And he said, you need to go see this chiropractor. And like uh, literally everything changed right away. So just kind of interesting connections, all these little stories and people come into your life and it kind of, I don't know, interesting. Um, maybe that's for another podcast to talk more on Neil or different people, but uh, Rhett, what, uh, is there a certain good experience or a challenging experience that you kind of felt like changed your life or, you know, something that sticks out in your mind kind of based on what we're talking about? Um, well, just a funny one is I know you went third overall in the NHL draft and then me going in the fifth round, that kind of. I, mean, I went third, up. I went third round. I went third round, not third overall, third round. Third round. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Got it. Start over. <laughs> a little different. It's a little different. <laughs> we won't be living here. We'll, be living just, here. we'll, we'll just, just, I mean, I could, I could leave that as, you know, everyone can think I went third overall. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we, maybe we shouldn't cut it, Dad. <laughs> so I went third over. No, I went third round. So you went, I went third round, Rhett. You went fifth round. Yeah, it's super interesting because I felt very competitive. Like, oh, Rem was third round. I was fifth round. And it was like, an inspiring day to like want to be better um, for mm. myself and like be competitive with my brother. So that's just like a funny competitive, maybe something that's in the family, uh, just story that inspired me to be continue on this journey of hockey. But also another thing that has really changed my life is uh, the concept of Jesus and just that whole ideology and just this love of this idea of this man who came here to, to save us. And I think just, a journey of discovering that knowledge uh, of the Bible. Uh, also, it's extremely prominent with the University of Minnesota on the hockey team. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just a really beautiful way to live life. And it's forever changed me in a great and powerful way. And I, I love Jesus. And I hope other people can emulate the love that Jesus brought into this world. And that those are some stories about me and just some things that yeah. I've been through. So I'm infinitely grateful. And how could I ever be so blessed uh, to be luckily born into such an amazing family? Yeah. So here, here's, let me just talk here real quick. I, um, when it comes to spirituality or God, I'm a private guy and I, I was raised Catholic and I was just turned off for a variety of reasons with the Catholic church. Uh, you ended up living with, uh, Ryan Johnson. His dad is the coach. His, his dad's the coach, assistant, uh, coach. assistant coach in Anaheim right yep, now. So, yep. The Ducks. Uh, Craig, Craig Johnson. Yeah. Um, and know him, great human being. Uh, but I don't remember him being uh, really religious, but Ryan is. And it kind of uh, morphed into, you know, where you were absorbing what, what, what he was interested in. And I find this is a, a great story, and I've shared this with many people that, that I train, is that you, you for some reason, set a goal uh, to read the Bible. You, there was a connection with Ryan and something, and you said, I'm going to start reading the Bible. In addition to your class loads in, in, at, at the University of Minnesota. And I didn't know this. I mean, not until, like, probably a month ago, uh, is that... The day that you finished reading the Bible is the day that you scored that goal in the final four against Michigan. Um, Not the final was, four. Or was it, what was the, it? The, the what was it? The Big Ten playoffs? The, the Big Ten championship. The Big Ten championship. Big Ten championship. And the, the, day after, the day you finished reading the Bible, you had that. So I can see now. How you have a connection with God. <laughs> <laughs> if I scored a goal that nice, I'd maybe be talking about it too. <laughs> I'd be talking what, about I have, too. I, that, I, I forgot that you, or yeah, I kind of forgot that interesting connection. That is good, good thought on that connection. I, I kind of have a few things I want to say. I know that, you know, we're probably all going to wrap it up here soon, but I have so many connections based off 
what Rhett just said. Um, first of all, did you know that Shattuck is a Episcopalian school, which means that's another branch of Christianity, believing in Jesus? So we always used to go to mass every Wednesday um, at school and we wore the uniforms and all that stuff. And so cause I'm going because the praying at the University of Minnesota, I thought it was cool. So at Shattuck, um, our Bantam coach, John LaFontaine, we would always pray um, before our games in the locker room. We all, all of us would get down on one knee and, and pray. And I thought that was really cool because it was interesting. It was the first time that I was away from home. I was 14. I went to Shattuck. So I, I lived with one of my best friends, Evan Robert. I lived with his family. And it, life was just different. I was away from home and I was at this school and all these kids from all over the world came to play hockey. Shattuck is known as a major powerhouse hockey school you know some of their alumni include Sidney Crosby Zach Parisi Jonathan Taves like there's so so was, you know and all of a sudden I'd never ex been exposed to that before and before games were praying I just thought it was kind of like a cool thing that we did I'd never seen that before and then I was because you at the University of Minnesota it sounds like there's a lot more like religious stuff with the hockey team going on but that was there when I was there as well like we always prayed before games so I thought it was cool when I was at the U that now I'm kind of thinking about it. We prayed at Shaq and then we prayed at the U. So that was really cool. And uh, side note, one more story. Um, one of Rhett and I's major mentors right now, um, ex-NHL player, Hall of Famer, Adam Oates, um, just kind of funny connections. He had, he had talked about a, a strength coach that he was working with one time. Um, I don't think it lasted super long, but uh, you know, Adam, if he gets on this podcast can tell, can tell the story, but um uh, there's this guy named Paul Check. Um, he's pretty world renowned. He's a holistic health practitioner in California. He uh, he's worked with a lot of different people for strength and fitness, like a bunch of ex NHL guys, Mike Madano. Um, I, some of the names are slipping my head, but he's worked with like Tony Robbins, the Chicago Bulls, Kobe Bryant, just a bunch of different athletes. But one thing that was always really interesting to me with Paul was that he was a he was a studier of world religions. So I think it's I just think it's really cool. I know long story longer, I'll try to shorten it up here, but I think it's really cool that you did finish the Bible. Um, we, you had talked to Adam Oates the other day, just asking him if he knew, because Adam, Adam was another person in our life that I always talked about reading books. I know Oatsy likes to read a lot, but uh, Rhett had asked Oatsy <clears throat> what he thought was the, the most read book on the planet, by, or most, most purchased. And, uh, Could be both purchased and read. I, I didn't know the answer, but I mean, I think everyone else is, but it's, it's the Bible. So it's, it's really, I think it's really cool that you read that thing front to back, like the book of life, you know, there's been, everyone can have their different opinions on it, the, all the translations or whatever, but you took the time to read like what is seen to be as the book of life. So I think it's cool that you bring that perspective on God and your beliefs on Jesus. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Was there yeah, anything you read before? Go ahead, honey. Sorry. <laughs> Mom was just wondering if, he was only halfway through the Bible, so he threw a stick that day <laughs> when, he, when he scored the other goal against North Dakota. He threw a stick in the crowd. <laughs> oh, so good. Um, so I just I just wanted to say that, you know, Rhett, because of my relationship or, you know, my view of religion, organized religion and stuff, we're, we're working on um, trying to find our relationship together with a higher power. So... Um, we've each, uh, he snuck the Bible into my room the other day, hit it, you know, by my bed <laughs> as a strong suggestion, but I got a couple books that I'm reading, um, that he's reading as well, that we try to connect on that. So it's, again, you said it best, Rhett, the process, you know, that's, that's my, that's my word. Uh, you know, you got to focus on the process and as my, coach in Ottawa, Jacques Martin, who I love and I want to have in this podcast sometime. Uh, and you boys have heard this a lot. Focus on the process. The results will take care of themselves. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I think that's a, that's a pretty good chunk right there. What do you guys think? I don't know. I mean, these are nuggets. I mean, everywhere, whether it's the Bible, whether it's people that you have as role models, whether you, what you're extracting from dad and I, I mean, these are these nuggets that you're carrying with you to to go on with your journey and your life like don't you think that i mean you're trying to find these information oh, these little pieces that sure. kind of fit into your life to achieve the goals and the dreams that you have 100 percent. i i think one thing that you know paul has said to us 
is that you don't see life as it is. You see life as you are. And part of who we all are is based on, you know, how we were raised, who our parents were, what they taught us, and then the experiences that we've had as humans. So, yeah, it's cool to kind of all of us to connect and, you know, where do we come from? Why did these things happen in our life? And kind of like explain a little bit of why we're interested in the things we're interested in, do the things that we do. Like these are little nuggets that kind of lead us forward and, you know, the process then. And then you're just your reasons to, I think you've seen where, where health can bring you Yeah. in a sense. Those are those little competitive edge pieces. How can you get most out of your career? Can it's not just about next year, but it could be in five years, six years ago, six years in the future, in a sense of mm-hmm. keeping that longevity in your career. I mean, yeah. the healthier you are now, the longer you can, you can play. Yeah. The longer you can play doing the thing that you love. Right. And I think, but you, you brought up the mindset stuff too. And that's where I think it's, you know, dad has been, you both were teachers. I think, you know, dad, had, I'm just using dad. He has his degree in the, the social relationships. Well, all the coaching he does yes. And all the coaching. But I, I just think, you know, your perspective dad and Rhett's perspective on you know mindset or Rhett more Jesus like that is a mindset thing you know it's what makes you stronger whatever it is whatever it takes to give you the confidence or some security to kind of get you through those days I mean there's some dark days that are there on that rocky journey to your dream but at the same time there's some beautiful waters too so it's not (laughs) to focus on that but for sure and I think one thing that like you know I try to say to you Rhett and, and people in our our family sometimes are Rem, you're always sending us Paul check stuff. Can you like send us something else? But, uh, you know, dad, you, you talked about your relationship with dad with, or dad with Rhett, with Jesus and different things. And your, your guys is different style with all that kind of stuff. Like I think Paul, Paul is an interesting guy cause he did study world religion. So I think it's important that we kind of all are working through our thoughts and feelings about this. Cause I think it is a major part of life. There's a reason why the Bible is, the most sold book on the planet like well, there's philosophy yeah it's, it's every, there's so a like, lot of philosophy in there yeah it's it's uh yeah there's a lot of different connections so i'm just i'm just grateful that we all like sat down and 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 talked about it um i think we should do this here. again we, we I, had no we had no plan on what this was going to be but i think this could be uh kind of a semi-regular occurrence and Uh, We might even be able to uh, let some players or anyone uh, ask us questions and we can just answer them. But I think this was a great first run of our uh, family podcast. Um, Great. Everyone okay? We survived. We we didn't hyperventilate too much. I think think we thrived. And um, I think for sure we should do this more. And I, I think... Are we done? No, we're not done. <laughs> this, this, this is the. <laughs> you guys just muted it. What did you? Say? Yeah, I didn't. What did you say my about my. Me? Oh my! My alarm just went off. This is just full rod. Like you just leave it like this. Like this is just us having a family. <laughs> this <laughs> us just having a family talk. But uh, I think so much of this conversation literally, you know, it really, we were talking about our mentors. We talked about you in, in Texas and different people that imprinted on you. I talked about Casey, Neil, Tom Brady's book. You're talking about Ryan, Jesus, and dad, dad, your stories of people that you've been around. I think a good podcast to have next time would to dive a little bit deeper into like some of the really important people um, in our journeys and just kind of, you know, talk about that. I think that could be a good topic too. Perfect. I think that's a great idea, Remmer. So right. um, you're cutting into my Netflix time. So uh, I'm going to say good night to everyone. Uh, this is the first All in the Family Pitlick podcast. Uh, we hope that you have all enjoyed it. And I'm hoping that we get to do this many more times. So thanks, everyone, for, for being here. Uh, and I look forward to doing this again. I love yeah. being here with you people. Yeah. Thanks, guys. That was good. Thank you. Yeah, one more thing to add, I think, just for the listener, that it might not be about the full podcast uh, to listen to it all just so intently, but it's the idea that you might pick up on one thing, and that one thing will then lead to the next better thing, which will then lead to the next better thing. And it's just really, it could be that one word that you hear that possibly could change just a huge part of your world in a beautiful way. So thank you for listening. I hope everyone has a wonderful day and week. God bless. 
And I think, well, just to add, keep adding on, I mean, that's why dad did call it the Hockey Journey podcast. Like, it is all these little moments in life and, you know, different things kind of come at different times. So it's all about the storytelling. And I think that was, you know, that's what I thought was so cool that you wanted to do the podcast, dad. And, um, you know, name it the way that you did is because it, it's all about these stories and it's all about helping. And I think you've done a great job and just the idea of why you're doing it and, you know, how credible you are through your playing experience and your life experience and just like the kindness of your heart that you want to help other people. So I think it's really cool. Awesomeness. All right. Wifey, Lisa, Remmer, Rhett, Kayla, Megan, thank you for being here. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And we will do this again at another time. We don't know when because the training's uh, starting here and the season's going to start soon. But we're definitely going to do this again. Uh, thank you for listening, and we will see you next time. Well, that concludes another episode of the Hockey Journey Podcast. I can't thank you enough for stopping by and listening. I hope you enjoyed hearing part one of the Pitlick Family Hockey Journey. We look forward to doing it again sometime soon. Lastly, if you think there's someone in your circle of family and friends that might like this episode as well, please share it with just one person. It will really help me in growing this hockey community. Again, I appreciate you being here. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, or submit a review. I hope to see you back here soon and... Do me a favor, make someone close to you smile today. All the best, my friends.